everyone. I really hope you've all enjoyed the new beginning we've all made this week. You've been back in your classrooms and there's been peace and quiet at home for mums and dads to do their work. And then maybe you've all had a chance to chat with each other at the end of the day, telling each other uh, all about what's happened during the day. I wonder what you have enjoyed most this week. I've really enjoyed seeing all of my friends again. And I've really enjoyed learning lots of new things. Oh, Zip and Zap, I'm so pleased that you've enjoyed your first week back. We're going to be learning more about God through our story again today. And it's the last week that we'll be looking at the story of Moses. Oh, I can't wait to find out what happened next. Me too. I wonder if they reached the land that God promised them yet. Well, we'll find out very soon. But maybe, like us, they'll have a few things to learn before they can really enter into everything that God has promised them. Shall we say a prayer first? Yes! yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've helped us to take our first steps into freedom this week. We know that the journey isn't over yet and we still have a way to go. We pray that we will always look to you for guidance to light our path through life and go in the direction that you want us to go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, are you ready for our first worship song today? It's one of our favourites and it reminds us that God is guiding us and we can always trust in him. We all know the actions to this one. Yes, you guessed it. Let's get up off our so sofas and worship God together as we sing My Lighthouse. my wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you to show
Well done, everyone. I love that song. I hope you do too. It's nearly time for our story today. Do you remember last week where God helped his people escape from the Egyptian army by parting the waves of the Red Sea? Well, we now find God's people being led through the desert to the promised land. I wonder how you would have felt. Grateful, excited, thankful, happy. God was miraculously feeding them and helping them find water in the desert. He was sheltering them from the heat of the sun during the day with a huge cloud and keeping them safe at night with a pillar of fire. You may have thought that God's people knew that they had a God they could trust in completely, wouldn't you? No. Despite all of these things that God had done for them, they moaned. They complained about everything. They forgot what life had been like before and took all of the blessings that God was giving them every day for granted. So let's hear the story of how Moses received the rules which he wanted his people to obey. And we call these God's Ten Commandments. After God showed his miraculous power in Egypt, he led the Israelites through the Red Sea and towards the Promised Land. They followed God who showed himself as a cloud by day and fire by night. As God led them through the wilderness, the Israelites became thirsty and hungry. Uh. They complained to Moses and Aaron uh. and said, if only we had died in Egypt. Uh. God said to Moses that he would provide for his people. Hey. Each morning they awoke and found manna for the day. What's that? And each night God gave them meat. <laughs> the people were still thirsty and they were mad at uh. Moses saying, did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Yeah. So Moses cried out to God, and God told Moses to strike a rock, and water came flowing out of it for the people to drink. And so the Lord provided for his people's needs. After traveling in the desert for three months, they came to Mount Sinai, and God called Moses from the top of the mountain. God spoke to Moses there of the future of his people and reminded him of the miracles of the past. After three days, there was thunder and lightning as a thick cloud covered the mountain. The people heard a loud trumpet blast. And Moses led people to the foot of the mountain to meet with God. God told them how his people were to live and how they were to honor him and respect each other. The Israelites had seen for themselves that God had spoken to Moses from heaven. These rules that God told them are called the Ten Commandments. And the Israelites feared God, for his mighty power had brought them out of slavery and provided for them in the desert. I really hope you enjoyed that story. Uh, it's time for our craft now. So in your packs, you should have a sheet of black paper, a sheet of white paper, and then a smaller sheet with the words of the Ten Commandments uh, printed on. You'll also need a pen, some scissors, and glue. Let's get started. First, take your sheet of white paper and draw around each of your hands. Then cut them out. Next, take your piece of black paper and fold it in half widthways. Then glue your hand shapes onto the black paper, one on one side of the fold and one on the other. Use the printed sheet to cut out each commandment and stick them 
on each of your paper fingers. I've added a heart to each of my hands to remind me that all of these commandments were made by God because he loves us. If you'd like to, you can shape your black paper to look like the stone tablets by folding it back in half and then cutting around a rounded shape along the top of both halves of the paper. On the front, you can cut out and stick the words Ten Commandments. And there you have God's rules. Maybe you could put them somewhere special so that you can look at them each day and remember them. Now, I wonder where Zip and Zap have got to. was a big sigh. What's up? Well, it's Saturday and that means it's washing day. And on washing day, Mum will insist that I sort out what needs washing. Well, that should be simple enough. Not if you didn't put away the clean washing that she put on your bed from last week. I didn't do it. And now I don't know what's clean and what's not because it's all a mess on the floor. <sighs> So, if you'd done what Mum had told you to do in the first place, you wouldn't be having to do this now, would you? Yes, all right, I know, I know. This isn't helping, Zip. Well, if it helps you to change your ways, it will do, Zap. Sorry, I'm not following you. You can probably tell I'm a bit busy right now. Look. Why don't you stop sorting your smelly socks out for a moment? Do you remember the craft we made about Moses and the Ten Commandments? Yes, and I don't remember anything about you shall sort out your smelly socks from your clean socks every Saturday morning. So why am I having to do this? <sighs> well, do you remember what the fifth commandment was? No, I haven't memorised them all, but of course you will have zip, so why don't you tell me? Oh, Zap, you really are in a bit of a grump this morning, aren't you? Yes, sorry. That's okay. I know there's nothing about sorting your dirty washing in God's Ten Commandments, but the Fifth Commandment does tell us to love and respect our mum and dad. When you love and respect someone, you always do what they ask, don't you? I do love Mum and Dad. I just don't like doing all this work. I know. But Mum and Dad do loads for us. They work to earn money to buy us all of these nice socks and they keep them clean and mend them when we get holes in them. It's part of how they show how much they love us. The least we can do is put our clean socks away each week. Yes, you're right, Zip. And I suppose we really should help Mum out, because it's Mother's Day tomorrow. And I don't, if I don't, she might not give me my favourite pudding at tea time. Well, we shouldn't just help out because it's Mother's Day, Zap. Or because we may suffer the consequences if we don't help. Like not getting my favourite pudding. Yes, Zap, like not getting your favourite pudding. God gave us all of the commandments to show us the way he wants us to live, to love him and to love one another. We should follow the rules to show him how much we love him and not to just avoid some kind of punishment. We can show that love in so many different ways. Like mum shows me she loves me when she makes me my favourite pudding. <laughs> exactly. And maybe we can show her we love her by making her a lovely card. And by putting away my clean clothes away each week. <laughs> you got it, Zap. God loves it when we keep his commandments and show love and respect for one another. Do you love and respect me, Zip? Yes. Well, would you mind helping me sort out these socks? <sighs> Go on then.
Ugh. Oh, that one definitely, definitely isn't clean. <laughs> oh, phew. <sighs> okay. Okay, now that we've done that, let's find Jo. She's going to teach us a brilliant way that we can remember the Ten Commandments using our hands. Okay, well, we may have to use our feet instead. <laughs> Thanks, Zip and Zap. And yes, I have discovered a really cool way of remembering the Ten Commandments. Are you ready with your hands? First commandment number one, hold up one finger. This is to remind us that there is only one God. Commandment number two, hold up two fingers. This is to remind us that two is too many gods. Don't make anything in your life more important than him. Commandment number three, hold up three fingers to form a W shape and tap our lips. This is to remind us to watch our words. Always say God's name with love and respect. Commandment number four, hold up four fingers but fold down your thumb. This is a reminder that just as your thumb is resting, we should take a day of rest too. Commandment number five, hold up five fingers like we're taking an oath or making a promise. A promise to always love and respect your mum and dad. Commandment number six. Hold up five fingers like this and then one finger of the other hand as if we're holding a gun aiming to shoot. A reminder to not hurt anyone. Now hold the fingers of one hand flat and use two fingers of the other hand, like two people walking together. This is a reminder that husbands and wives should be faithful to one another. Then commandment number eight, hold four fingers of each hand in front of your face and peer through them as though through the bars of a prison cell. A reminder not to steal because you could go to prison. Then hold up five fingers of one hand and four fingers of the other. It helps to remind us it looks like your, your fingers are telling lies against your thumb. A reminder to always tell the truth. And finally, commandment number 10. Take all of your fingers on your hands and rub them together in a greedy kind of way. A reminder to be happy with what we have and not to wish we had the things that others have. So there you go. A great way to remember all of those 10 commandments using the fingers of our hands. Have a go and see how many you can remember. So we're now, now going to have our chat and catch with God. And for this, you're going to need to find the little ball of Play-Doh that's inside your packs for this week. You'll also need something to make a mark in it. So a pencil or something like that, anything that you have to hand to make the marks on your dough. So are you ready to chat and catch with God? So first of all, let's mould the dough between our hands and enjoy the feel as you gently mould and shape it. Imagine that you are the dough and God is shaping you. Ask him to shape you into the person he wants you to be. Mm. 
Next, we're going to roll or stretch the dough <laughs> like that so that it's really thin. Really, really, really thin and stretched almost to the point where it breaks. Now I want us to tell God about something this week that upset you, made you feel fragile. Ask God to remould you, to reshape you back to his design. Now roll the dough into a ball between your palms and just flatten it slightly. You're going to take whatever you found, your pencil, whatever, and you're going to put an X on it. Like that, you can see that. Now the X reminds us of a piece of work that we've got wrong when the teacher marks it. So I want you to tell God about something that you've done wrong this week, not your schoolwork, but perhaps you've behaved a bit badly, you've upset someone, or maybe you refused to do something that someone asked you to do. Just take a moment and tell God how sorry you are and listen to what he says to you in reply. Now we're going to turn the dough so that instead of an X, it now looks more like a cross. And the cross reminds us of what Jesus did in dying for us. He did it because he loves us. And it's because of this and what he did that we can come to God and say sorry and know we are forgiven. Thank Jesus for what he's done for you. Now think about the 10 commandments that we've been learning about today. So separate your dough into two shapes like that and think about the two tablets that God carved those rules into. Then the tablets together and we're going to have a go at moulding the shape of a heart. So let's have a go at this little pointy bottom and then a little indent in the top and yeah that looks like the shape of a heart like that. So when you've done that, it reminds us of the time where Jesus summed up all of the commandments into one, that we should love God with all our hearts and love others as we love ourselves. And if you remember these two things, then it will help us to live the life that God wants us to. And finally, it's Mother's Day, so why don't you have a go at shaping your dough into something for your mum? A picture of her face, a flower, a teacup. Have fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed chatting with God uh, this way today. There are loads of other things in your packs this week. There is, let me find it, a star chart. 
like that and a little pack of shiny stickers and this will be a really good way for you this week to see how you can share God's love with others and then as you do you can stick the stars on your sheet and there's also a prayer sheet for our mothers. Now the words all around the petals help us to think about all of the good things that our mums do for us but not only that, the sheet will also help us to think about all of the people in our lives who love and nurture us, just like our mums do. So as you spend some time colouring in the flowers, you might want to think and pray for all the different people who teach you, who feed you, who encourage you, who ask you how you are, who make you laugh, and all of those wonderful things that our mums do for us. And God has placed loads of people in our lives to nurture us in the way they do as well. So lots and lots of things to do, colouring, the together at home sheet. But we've come to our, the end of our time together today, but we hope the, uh, the rest of the day will be a really special one for you as a family. I know that there'll be many people who you would normally get together with today, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles. We're all missing them right now, but we're going to end with a song of worship to remind us how we are all part of the big family of God and how much he loves us all. A very happy Mother's Day, everyone. Bye bye. like pink and some like blue some of us like reading books some of us like feeding ducks that's because we're different me and you but God loves Because we're different, you and me But God